Ganapatiye Namaha, Om Gam Ganapatiye Namaha, Om Gam Ganapatiye Namaha, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Brahma Mira Stuparan Takare, Banu Shashi Bumi Sutta, Buddha Sha Guru Sha Shukra, Shani Rahu Keteva, Sarve Graha Shanti Karabhavantu, Om Om Ringura Venamaha, Om Shukraya Namaha, <clears throat> Om Namah Shivaya. <clears throat> well, greetings and welcome to another episode of The Plant of Cosmic Kev 100. <clears throat> this is your weekly astro video zine where we take the planets, sometimes referred to as grahas, and the houses, sometimes referred to as bhavas, and then the signs of the zodiac, sometimes referred to as rishis. Now, most of this is still, I'm still doing the tropical Western astrology because that's what you're mostly familiar with, but I, I really encourage you to get to know Jyotish, get to know Vedic astrology, which is sidereal. It's based on where the constellations actually are, whereas Western tropical astrology is based on seasons. The planets really aren't there. If you're going to look in a telescope, you're going to you're going to make a mistake as to where the planets are 85% of the time in uh, Western astrology. Vedic astrology, you'll be more on a, you'll be on a much higher level of accuracy. So anyhow, and so talking about the Vedic part of, of this weekend, so for Friday, today's where we're beginning with, with the horoscope, it's the moon's in a constellation or a lunar mansion known as Uttara Falguni. Now, the Falgunis are about love and making love and feeling good. Um, Uttara Falguni is ruled by the sun. And so this is the more masculine part of the Falgunis. It's one quarter Leo and three quarters Virgo. Now, in the tropical zodiac, the, the moon's considered to be in Virgo all day today. And uh, it'll be in, in it for most of the day. In, in Virgo, but it'll start out in, in Leo and in, in the Vedic astrology. So what we're looking at here is this is a day where a lot of boons, we're serving others, helping others counts, and there's really a lot of sweetness to today. And, and so I, I would say just take advantage of that. Um, over the weekend, Moon's going to be in the Hasta Nakshatra, which is about working with your hands lending a hand, and it's also somewhat more emotionally volatile. Um, it could be a little bit rascally, too, and, you know, people could overindulge in alcohol and things like that during the hosta moon, too much food. And then, you know, by Monday, moon will be in Shitra Nakshatra and in, in the Libra constellation, and there will be this sense of restoring balance, sort of this restorative thing going on. When we get into um, Tuesday, Moon will be in Swati, very airy day, very good day for enterprise and making business things happen. Wednesday will be lovely, Moon will be in Vishaka, we, we'll branch out, we'll get this real effect from Jupiter. And in Vedic astrology, the sun's in Taurus this whole week. Now, we're, we're moving towards a full moon. So the full moon happens early to Thursday morning. And so it's about, I think, 6.52 a.m. Pacific daylight time. So just a little after sunrise. And it's the sun, Jupiter, and Venus are all together in the first house during that... Um, full moon, and the full moon is in a lunar mansion known as Anurata, and Anurata is ruled by Mitra, which is the the guise of friendship, making friends, um, making peace, getting opposites together, and just delighting in life. It's the lotus that blooms and dies and sets out its seeds in the mud, so it's a lovely lovely full moon, and it's a very kind of, it's kind of sort of like a lover's full moon, too, with uh, Anurata's association with Radha and Krishna, so all this, it's a Saturn ruled nakshatra, which they tend to be good nakshatras, so this, I'm, I'm 
sending out energy for a positive full moon. Okay, so Monday morning on the 20th, just before 6 a.m., sun moves into Gemini. And so we look at the two sides to every story in that, in, in the Western interpretation of Gemini. It's about Castor and Pollux. They, they were twins. One of them had some pretty bad behavior um, and was sentenced to Hades. But the other brother said, it's not fair that I'd be separated from my brother. So that brother was given the right to go to Hades and back. And, you know, so I think in, in Western interpretation of Gemini is often, Gemini is a sign that's been to hell and back. <laughs> and then the two-faced behavior is somewhat a Western interpretation of it. I, I you know, I, I mean, I'll be, I'll be really honest with you folks. Personally, I take the Vedic a lot more seriously, but I, I do this just to um, kind of, I guess, seduce you into the the world of the horoscopes and Zodiac. And, you know, I, I haven't quite yet switched this show over to completely Vedic, but it seems like it's in the works um, <laughs> in my own heart. So anyhow... We're going to go side by side according to the Western Zodiac and uh, as to what you can expect. And, you know, you can use your sun sign. If you know your rising sign, that's going to give you a more accurate interpretation. Moon sign will give you the second most accurate interpretation. Sun sign is about the third most accurate interpretation. So I'm sure there's those who differ with me and have different interpretations. I got... I got this letter from one one of my my followers, and that it's just that um, it's funny because she has a Vedic yogi name, but she can't understand Vedic astrology. I'm like, look, get down into it, you know, dig into it. Don't you know? Um, don't be so hard on yourself. I find Western astrology is a lot more materialistic, just like Western culture is, and. <laughs> I, you know, but I, I appreciate your comments and meanings. We're going to start sign by sign with you, Aries. So here's the deal, Aries. It's like this week, North Node and Mars are pretty close together. And North Node's that desire that has no bottom. Mars's purpose is really to get rid of evil. But it's also very driven. And so when you have ungrounded desires, and, and I know it's in... Aries in Western Zodiac, Vedic Pisces. Vedic Pisces also implies that there could be some confusion going on in your life that's causing some kind of anger. When I did the full moon chart, I, I noticed that that was the most powerful placement, really, was that was in that 11th house, at least here on the West Coast. So there's just some kind of social movement might happen that might not be completely grounded or well-founded, but if it is on the spiritual, if people are just getting down and praying, it's like, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, therefore I will hear from heaven, forgive them of their sins, and heal their land. That's what we need to happen, Aries. That's what we need. And um, there's really nothing else I, I can add to that. Uh, I, I'd say that this is a time where you're manifesting some money, but you're also moving into the world of siblings, friends, and short trips. Okay. Greetings, Taurus. Welcome to your horoscope. So this weekend is the last weekend of Western Zodiac, seasonal sun in Taurus. And your key phrase is, I have, and you're generally about satisfaction. So the moon will be in Libra over the weekend. It'll be in Virgo on Friday. Friday looks like an awesome day for you. I like the aspects I saw on Friday. Friday looks really happy. Uh, Saturday may be a little bit more, more challenging, but, you know, moon's in Libra. And, and so it's another Venus ruled moon. It's more of a challenging moon because it's like in the sixth house for you. And that's like obstacles, maybe people that want to get in your face a little bit and just, you know, just relax, stay chill. You're mostly like that. So I don't, I don't see that as a, as a really hard thing. I mean, looking at Mars and Rahu in the 12th house, that's a house of losses. So, you know, you want to be careful with this. Um, the full moon, that's going to be in your eighth house. That's a lot of transformation, but otherwise, you know, Venus is in the first house 
along with Jupiter, along with the sun, at least this weekend. And there's an incredible amount of blessing in that, incredible goodness, and let's work with that. Uh, Gemini, welcome your horoscope. I mean, the dark day of the soul is over after this weekend. Uh, the sun goes in your first house. I mean, I'm not going to say that, oh, wow, it's all roses and flowers yet. But, um, you know, where your real power is, is investigating your spiritual life, getting yourself a prayer practice, mantra practice, yoga practice, nature walking practice, anything that gets you closer to God, closer to the divine, closer to the source of all life. That is what's going to lift you up right now. We all need an uplift. Also, there's been some messages and dreams for you lately. I keep a dream, dream journal. I think that would help during this time because I, I'd say this is sort of like the gateway week to what's going to happen over the next solar year between now and until the end of Taurus and when the sun goes into Gemini again in 2025. So um, this is your time to kind of lay out the game plan for, for 2024 through the spring of 2025. Yeah. Well, hello, Cancer. Welcome to your horoscope. When you look at this, it's like you have a lot of responsibility. There's a lot of weight on your shoulders right now. There's a lot of things that are not particularly balanced. And so we have to look at this. And we want to look at it in a way where we're giving the world the best of ourselves. The best. What can we do that is going to help other people this week? Now, we know that moon gets exalted in Taurus. Um, and that you're the one sign that rules the moon. And, you know, moon not only rules the emotions, but it rules intuition. It rules the mind, actually. You know, our brains are floating on water, folks. And that's, that is the truth of it. So when we're looking about this weekend, there's a lot of focus on family and um, your own emotions, maybe memories, older relatives, your mother, I mean, this was my first Mother's Day a couple weeks ago without mom, and that's huge, you know. We don't value our parents enough in general and what they can give us, and so there's some reflection there. This full moon is going to affect you in a way where there might be um, some pulling you know, on your heartstrings, there might be some kind of obstacle you have to overcome. And, and so it's important to look at that. Um, Gemini time is going to help you in some ways. Um, but it's really a time to kind of just get down to your spiritual life and harvest what you can from the year ahead. There might be some losses. Pay attention to your dreams and move forward. Uh, greetings, Leo. Welcome to your horoscope. Um, it's so much responsibility, just like cancer. A little bit of, there's real, some kind of transformation in the way you relate to other people, relationships, maybe transformation in your career life. Um, it is, it's huge. And I think, you know, whatever conflict we get out of this North Node Mars thing, you've got some intelligence and some wisdom and some generosity and kindness as far as how to deal with it. Um, Taurus is in your midheaven. You can do something very special this weekend that's just going to expose your creativity and your goodness. My greetings, Virgo, and welcome to your horoscope. So, you know, here we are starting. You know, the thing about this moon on... Friday, we're still kind of overcoming that um, connection, you know, uh, with other things. I mean, this moon is actually keeping all these other grahas, these other planets in balance. And so, um, you know, just kind of focusing on that, there might be a little bit of pressure on you, who you are, because um, you're needed right now. That's 
sort of what I'm seeing, and that's going to continue through the weekend. You might manifest some money. You might, you know, get new clients for your business or whatever. Um, you know, dealings with family, staying close to them, and just keeping everything on, on the chill vibe as we uh, go through the week. I mean, Taurus time is wonderful. This Jupiter, Venus, Sun in your ninth house. I mean, there's a lot of luck and a lot of good fortune. And I just, you know, pray that you all receive those blessings, Virgo, as we go through this week. Mm. Greetings, Libra, and welcome to your horoscope. So, I mean, the weekend looks great. Your popularity's up. Uh, you know, we're moving from Taurus to Gemini. So, Taurus affords you this sense of transformation. And it's really overall good transformation. It's changes that need to happen. I think the thing to keep in mind is that you're not in power right now. Um, it's other people's power. And if you ask other people for help, as long as you're not one of those whiny Libras that are always asking for help from other people, you know, <laughs> we all know one of those. No, I don't know. <laughs> always in trouble. <laughs> no, they're, not. they're not really. Um, I think it's an internal trouble, you know, from a lot of overemphasis on niceness and harmony. Sometimes we have to enter into the disharmony in order to let the chips fall where they may, and maybe even discover something that might actually work better than ever, ever worked before. So, I mean, you're kind of like the flavor of the weekend. And so I, I can see that during this whole hosta moon thing and stuff. Um, <clears throat> lend a hand, you know. Um, note that come Monday, sun is moving into your ninth house. It's a house of good fortune. That's a house of great learning. That's a house of travel. That's a house of exotic excitement. Uh, greeting, Scorpio. Welcome to your horoscope. So, you know, Taurus is your partnership sign. And to have Venus and Jupiter and Sun transit your seventh house is absolutely lovely. Help you in your relationships, can help you at work. And it gives you a lot of beautiful things to reflect upon, a lot of godly things, higher vibe things. You know, we say that Venus and Jupiter are actually the two gurus. And the Sun is kind of like, it's got like a fatherly energy, so does Jupiter to some extent too. Um, and in the seventh house, it's like we, we look at, you know, this is your responsibility. It, you know, if you're, is to be a good parent and to be a good lover and to create bliss in all your relationships, be they personal ones or in the workplace. And, and so that's where I'm going with this. Um, so living in a Gemini is very eighth house. It's transformational. And, you know, it's interesting to, to note that um, Gemini is eight signs away from Scorpio. <laughs> and Scorpio is eight, is I guess just six signs away from Gemini. And so there's some, there, there's an interesting relationship between Gemini and Scorpio. And you might discover that this weekend. Um, the full moon could bring some money perhaps, you know, can bring some loveliness in your life. And I think it's just realizing, you know, don't, don't get caught up on the ego stuff as we go through the week. Just realize that, that it's not about you. Follow those uh, four agreements. Be impeccable with your word. Um, always do your best. Don't take anything personal. And, um, you know, just, uh, <laughs> I don't know what happened to the other, other one there. Let's say be impeccable with your word. Always do your best. And don't take anything personal. And, um, well, I'll go, I'll, I'll get back to it. <laughs> somebody, somebody in the comments will say what the fourth one is. And I'll just be like, ah, dang it. Uh, right on. Um. Greetings, Sagittarius. Welcome to your horoscope. So, of course, the moon will be in Sagittarius when it's full on the 23rd of May. So, and as the sun goes into Gemini after this weekend, there's kind of like a cosmic relief. You're in your partnership sign. You're not going through all the obstacles that you went through in Taurus time. And, I mean, there's still, you know, a few planets, a couple planets in that 
part of the Zodiac to sort of um, stimulate, yeah, I've got to overcome this illness, I've got to do all this work, this organization, be better at my work, all of that is um, coming on for you. And, and, you know, you're working more in your personal life, but you're entering into this place now where um, relationships are going to make all the difference in the world. And so be better at your relationships as we do this. Okay, so greetings Capricorn. Welcome to your horoscope. Now, I mean, when we look at this particular layout of the sky, it's like everything is much more on the introspective side of the, of the zodiac. So you're doing your personal work right now. Saturn in the third house, that's work with your neighbors, work with your siblings, writing, getting things on writing. If you're writing a book, perfect time for that. Uh, you're doing very well. Gemini time is about hard work for you. So we're moving into this hard workplace. Um, you know, Friday looks like a lovely day for you. The weekend, you know, it's like a good day, good days to get work done for you. And um, I would say like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday will be better on your social life will be better, you know, you'll be feeling a little more friendly and out there and you know this full moon I would kind of lay low for you I, I would say you know being in the house of loss and 12th house karma stuff you know I just kind of take it easy do a lot of praying <laughs> uh greetings Aquarius welcome to your horoscope and I mean for you too this is mostly like introspective personal stuff as far as where all the planet's energy is right now and that's really the good work because you're creating a good foundation for yourself now, this weekend looks great because, you know, you get along really well with Libra, and that's your fifth house, so it'll be kind of heart opening, or rather your ninth house, so it'll be educational. And then Sun moving into Gemini will be more heart opening and give you more chance to be with children if you have children and work on your creative projects more. So you'll be in a more harmonious flow, and it you won't feel quite as stuck at home. You know, I think a lot of the, the Taurus season has been a lot more stuck at home, nose to the grindstone stuff, and things are starting to open up. There'll be a lot more opportunities for travel and fun, and, you know, the, the full moon will be um, good, you know, for like a party in the neighborhood kind of thing. Well, greetings, Pisces, and welcome to your horoscope. I mean, <clears throat> I see like Neptune and Saturn, you know, I mean, they're not like super close together, but they're both planets that invoke a sense of wisdom. Sometimes Neptune can be confused. Sometimes Neptune can be um, drugs. It could be overextending yourself. It could be feeling like you're like things are a wash or at a weakness. Saturn's like boot camp, you know. Look, I expect this of you, but it's also slow. It's about cultivating patience. It's about cultivating consistency. So, like, for you, it's like being consistent in a prayer meditation practice. It's being consistent with making donations to the poor and helping people and just, you know, being more dependent upon source, about on the divine parents, on, on God as father, God as mother, taking you, taking care of you in order to get your needs met, and then you being God-like and taking care of other people. It, it releases you. You don't, you know, part of the problem, I think, of our societies is so narcissistic and so focused on self-development. We don't realize that actually part of self-development is simultaneously caring for others while we're working on ourselves. And, and there has to be a balance in that. You know, that's why, like, you know, this half of the Zodiac is like self, this half is others. And so it's like you kind of want to achieve that balance as we go through the week. This uh, full moon is going to be in your midheaven. It's kind of like performance time. Show the world what you're made of and uh, make that beautiful love, that song of love that we all want to hear this week. That's what I want to focus on. Yeah, there's conflict. Yeah, there's sometimes things that are uneasy, but we can be kind we can bring a calmness. We can bring a steadfastness in this time. And we're going to come out of this all right. I so appreciate you for being here. I thank you for your comments. I love you, new subscribers. I love you, old subscribers. You know, so many people who have watched, faithful, uh, you know, Joseph Michael Rogers, give you a shout today. I'm going to give a shout out to um, 
my friend Rebeck, Rebecca, um, and uh, both of my Rebecca friends, and and Melissa, who's been faithful, watching these and listening, and um, and Shant, and to um, my Pisces friends, my Sag Rising friend, these other comments. Please share this. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. Um, also, John, my acupuncturist, and diehard Democrat. <laughs> Go military industrial complex. <laughs> well, no, they're both military industrial complex. They're both run by the banks. And, you know, and I guess, you know, to some people, playing the lesser of evils is a lesser of evils. So, you know, credit where credit's due. Uh, I don't know. I just think evil is evil. <laughs> but you know what? Good is good. Light is light. God is good. And in spite of all that, we can do better. So let's do that. Om Shanti 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 Om Tatsat.